Hello and welcome to another installment of How to Rig Your Boat. Um, this is the Scamp. It's a 12-foot tiny pocket cruiser uh, built by Gig Harbor Boat Works. And uh, I'm going to walk you through how to set up the sail rig today. Um, it's a little bit different from most of the boats that you've probably seen out there. This is a balanced lug rig as opposed to a sloop, which means that there's a single sail which has you know four sides rather than the usual triangular shape. Um, and it's a little bit different in how it goes together, but at the same time, it's also a lot easier to set up than most of the boats you've seen. The way the boat is sitting right now is the way it come, it would, you would see it when you pull into the boat launch. Um, I've taken the cover off. This bag contains the entire sail rig, your mast, your sails, your boom, everything is in here. And when you travel, you would put a travel cover over this, which would uh, go over the gear bag. So when you arrive at the boat launch, you've got one tidy package. You just take the cover off, put it together, and you're on the water 20 minutes later. So it's possible to rig the scamp either on the trailer um, or sitting on the beach just like this. Or even if you have to, you can do this on the water. It's a little bit more awkward, but I've tried it and it does definitely work. Uh, the first thing you want to do is pull your sail bag out of the boat um, and set it across the boat, preferably with the forward end of the sail to the port side or the left side of the boat. All right, we'll do that right now. Just like that. Now, opening up the gear bag. You can tell we've got the mast pieces right here. We've got the sail all ready to go. And uh, the first step, and this is probably the most awkward step of the whole process, is putting the mast together. This will be the most awkward step if you're trying to work inside the boat. If you're on the beach, not that much, that big of a deal. So, as with the, all of our other masts, we have a uh, two-piece uh, slip joint. This is a very tightly toleranced piece, so you have to make sure, sure that uh, your connections are clean. If you have any sand in here, you might be able to slide it together, but if you do, you probably won't get it apart again. And just line up and push. Now, a unique feature of the scamp mast is that it's actually watertight, uh, which means that it will float. Uh, it pre helps prevent the boat from turtling if you ever do manage to capsize. It also keeps it on the surface if you drop it overboard and it try starts to float away. Um, for that reason, there's a little air vent right here that actually allows the joint to breathe as you're sliding it in and out. After you've got the mast out, uh, you want to uncoil your lines. For storage, I like to have my lines um, coiled at the head of the mast. This way there's no confusion about what this line does. It's your halyard. It's in the halyard block. It doesn't turn into a dock line. You just uh, uncoil it like this and walk it down to the other end. And same thing with the lazy jacks. Okay. So, we will cleat off the halyard right here, just for convenience's sake. There is this line right here, and we're just going to use that just so to keep the lazy jacks out of the way. And that's all the preparation we need to do at this point. We can get into the boat to uh, start putting up the sail. And we're ready to step the mast. At this point, you just collect your lines, keep them from swinging around too wildly. You pick up this whole pole, which weighs all of 12 pounds, and swing it around, and line up the bottom of the pole with the uh, handy-dandy little guidance alignment ramp on the boat, push it up, and just set it down. One thing to pay attention to is you want your bungee cord to go into the hole, and you want this white line to stay out of the hole. And once that's all arranged, let it drop in place. This is your downhaul. We'll be dealing with that in a minute. We'll take the halyard and secure it just for now. And we need to deal with the lazy jacks. The lazy jacks don't actually help you sail the boat, but they are really useful when you stop. What they do is they catch and support the sail when you lower it so it doesn't just fall into the cockpit. 
and if you want to put a reef in or if you're furling it to come into the beach, uh, it keeps them out of the cockpit and gives you a clear uh, working space to move around in. Uh, first of all, we'll need to get these lines prepped up here. We want to untie these knots, make sure our lines aren't tangled. I'm going to cleat this one off right there, just like that, and then untie these two. There we go. Perfect. Now there are two, two halves to the Lazy Jack system. We have the lines going up the mast and we have these loops coming off the boom. Now what we want to do is find one of these loops and just clip it to one of these hooks. Doesn't matter which one. Now this is the important part. We find the other loop and whichever side of the boom bundle you came up on with the first line, you want to come up on the other side with the second one. So I'm going to reach underneath and come up on the opposite side and just clip it to the other hook and we're done. So now I can use lazy jacks to pick up this entire bundle and just swing it into place um, on the mast. I will run the loop here through the fair lead and the cleat, pull it towards me. I'm going to reach underneath the bundle and lift and take up the slack on the cleat. Just like that. At this point, it doesn't matter how high you set the uh, sail bundle, we are basically just making some room for us to work. Once it's hanging and secured, I've got the lazy jacks cleated off. I'm going to swing this around like that. I want the entire bundle to be on the port side or the left side of the mast and the forward end of the boom to be in the front. I'm going to fold the whole thing back a little bit and try and find the boom in here. And on top of the boom, near the front, is this little fair lead right here. And I have this line on the mast. I will clip that hook to that fair lead. And that keeps everything um, contained. So now that we have the sail hung and up and out of the cockpit, uh, that gives us a little bit more room to move. Uh, the first thing we should do is secure it so it doesn't go flailing about wildly when the wind blows. I mean, it's a quiet day today, but that's hopefully not the case when you're down at the beach. Um, going to the back of the boom, right here, we have our main sheet all tight, nicely bundled and ready to go. We'll just uncoil that like so. And we take the end of the main sheet, we feed it through this ring right here. It's on the traveler on the back of the boat and we come back up and right on the back of the boom there's a block hanging down. We go through that block from back to front like that. Then we pull the main sheet along the underside of the boom. Now there's going to be some lines hanging down. We've got um, we've got reefing lines and outhaul and what we want to do is avoid crossing any of them and just stay as close to the boom as we can and just move all the way forward to here where there's another block and we go through that back to front and down. Now here we have our main sheet cleat. This piece is optional and you can it's removable but for now we'll put it in and drop a pin to lock it in place like that and like that. And then we will run the main sheet through the cleat on the, and out the back like that. I'm going to take up the slack. And our bundle is secured. Now we need to get the sail up. So next question is what do we do with the halyard? Halyard is the big white line coming down off the top of the mast. We use it to raise the sail. Untie the knot in the end. One thing about the halyard is if you 
If you're not hanging on to it, the ends should be secured. They could be tied in a knot just to each other. They could be clipped to a cleat on the boat or what have you, but if you let one side go, you pull on the other side, the halyard wanders up the mast and you have to take the whole rig apart and start over. So, we are looking for the inside leg of the halyard, the one closest to the mast. And this comes down, just straight down along the mast to the uh, very base. And at the base of the mast, there are two holes. And you want to go through the starboard or the right side hole and down below the cockpit. And then you reach below the cockpit. And there are two cleats on the mast step. And the right side, the starboard cleat, is for the halyard. And you take the end of the halyard and reach behind the cleat. And there's a little block. You thread it through the block and then through the cleat and out. We tie a little stop knot and then just pull it back like that. We want all the slack we can get up top right now. Okay, now the other leg of the halyard, the one on the outside of the block at the top of the mast, comes in between the two legs of the lazy jacks. Um, so you want to make sure you stay between these two, uh, two halves of the lazy jack. And you come back and you find the yard, which is this hole at the top of the sail. It's the one that only has one piece of hardware on it. And you find this block on the yard and you run the end of your halyard through this block from back to front again. Like that. And then you come back forward, again staying between the legs of the lazy jacks until you get to here. Now we come out the front of the lazy jacks and I'm going to tie a big old loop in the end of the halyard, just like that. Overhand knot, figure eight knot, doesn't matter. We just need a loop. Now I take this loop and I go around the starboard side of the mast and I reach forward and I hook it over the end of the yard, just like that. Now you'll notice <coughs> the yard is on the port side, on the left side of the mast. The halyard is on the starboard side of the mast. So the mast is trapped between the yard and the halyard, and that keeps your sail um, nice and tight to the mast once you, raise, once you raise it. So the last part of the puzzle is the downhaul. Um, the halyard uh, pulls the sail up, and the downhaul pulls the sail down. The downhaul is this little white line which is attached to the base of the mast. It's already set and ready to go. You find the end of that, and we find the boom. And right here at the front of the boom, there's another block. This one's kind of a little sideways. So we go up through this block, front to back this time, and back down. And the, so there's a second hole uh, going through the mast step, so we feed the end of the halyard through that hole. Go back down below decks. And there's our second cleat, and just like we did with the halyard, we are going to go through this little block at the back and then the cleat itself and we're good. Now this bungee cord, <coughs> you can secure that to the mast step down here and that's supposed to keep the mast from slipping out if uh, the mast wants to slip out. And at that point, at this point, we're ready to raise the sail. Just double checking, our dawn hall is attached, our main sheet is attached, our halyard is attached, and that's all we need. So you just grab the halyard and you start pulling. Now, what you're looking for is about eight inches of separation between the yard and the top of the mast. And we are right about there. Once the sail is up, we use the downhaul. We pull that tight just to uh, get it the shape that it needs. And now we check our lines and make sure that our reef lines are where they're supposed to be and we don't have any tangles that we're going to regret later on on the water. Okay, so the sail is up, the lines are rigged. The last step, and this one's important, is to make sure that everything is running freely. Every, all the lines are where they're supposed to be and nothing got wrapped around where it shouldn't be. 
Um, first of all, uh, double check. We want to make sure that we have a little bit of separation between the top of the mast and the, uh, and the yard. We want at least 8 inches, 8 to 12 inches, so that when the yard swings, there's some, some line up there that can twist and it's not block on block and getting jammed up. Second of all, we want to make sure that our lazy jacks are not too loose and not too tight. Uh, these ones are a little bit loose right now, so I can take up a little bit of slack, just like that. And if they're too tight, then the lazy jacks will be holding up the boom instead of the yard and uh, the sail doesn't shape properly. So we want well, about that much space. And we just cleat those off right there. That's the last time you'll have to worry about the lazy jacks. Then check your reef lines. The reef lines are great at getting tangled. They're one of those complications that are a real pain in the butt until you actually need them. And what they should do is they would run from one of your cleats on the, uh, on the boom. They will go forward through a fair lead, up through a hole in the sail, and then back down to the opposite side. This one is fine. On the other side, we're going forward, we go to this fair lead, we go up, we come back down, and here we have a problem. This is much tighter than it should be. Let's go forward and fix that. And sure enough, this reef line got wrapped around the mast, uh, got wrapped around the boom here. So we're going to have to take some slack. There we go. And we just unwrap that. So it goes up, comes back down, and stops. We're good. Same thing in the back. And both of these are nice and clean. Now, one thing that I found is very helpful is when you put your rig away, if you put the reefs in as you take the sail down, it takes a couple of minutes while you're taking the sail down, but then when you put it up, you don't have any problems with tangles in them. They're, they're nice and snug, and they can't get themselves wrapped around anything but then you have to shake them out after you, after you put the sail up. So it's kind of a personal preference on which is more work. Our last check, main sheet is running clean. Um, there we go, downhaul is tight. A word about the downhaul. This boat will not sail to windward if your downhaul isn't tight. Um, on a triangular sail, like a, on the main sail on a sloop, you have the mast providing a, a rigid leading edge for the sail, and that allows the sail to come off the mast in a nice airfoil shape, and that pr provides your power. With a four-sided sail, you don't have a rigid leading edge, and the way you get that a, a, a rigid edge is with the downhaul. So you raise the sail with the halyard, and then you use the downhaul, downhaul to tension the sail, and make sure that the leading edge cannot deflect, and that's how you go to windward. There's only one thing left to do, which is hanging the rudder. You may want to wait until the boat is in the water before you do this, but it's very straightforward. You take your rudder, you have a loop of line coming off the rudder blade. You just want to stick that along the top of the top gudgeon. Excuse me, you want to stick that along the top of the top pintle, just like that. That's it. And you take the rudder and you hang it in the gudgeons, right there. Like that. And you take this line and you run it through into the cockpit. And you pick up your tiller, take off the tiller bolt. And you slide the tiller out and into the body of the rudder and secure it with the tiller bolt. Like that. Once you have the tiller in place, it will actually prevent the rudder from jumping out of the gudgeon, so that locks it so there's no chance of losing the rudder. And then you use the kick up line and you just raise it and cleat it off on the side of the tiller and you're ready to launch. This will stay out of the way until you're ready to go. There's one very important piece of the puzzle that's left for this boat, um, and that is the ballast tank. 
the scamp comes with 180 pounds of water ballast. You need to fill the ballast tank before you start sailing and then you can empty it when you're done and that just makes your boat that much lighter when you pull it back home. The ballast tank is this hatch on the floor right here. You can see the outlines of it. Um, in order to fill it, you open up this little access port right here and you've got a little drain plug attached to the bottom of the uh, of the hatch cover and that fits into a bung in the bottom of the ballast tank. When you launch the boat you want this to be out. So while you're getting ready to head out the ballast tank is going to be busy filling um, at the dock or at the beach. Once you're ready to go check your ballast tank. If the water has stopped coming in you just reach in insert the plug and then you grab your bailing bucket you reach over the side of the boat and you start bailing in the opposite direction and just fill up that ballast tank until it's right up to the brim and rock the boat a little bit to make sure that there aren't any air bottles trapped trapped in the ends and when it's right up brimming you just go ahead and screw this hatch back down and you're set now, there are three other plugs that you need to worry about. At the back end in your bilge, you have two drain plugs. You have one down in the floor, you have one in the transom here. Um, this cockpit is self mailing so if these plugs are out, that's fine. You'll just have some water washing around in your bilge. If you do end up getting water into the cockpit, you just pull these plugs and the water will leave on its own. Do make sure you have these plugs along when you're sailing. It gets kind of messy when it's water sloshing in and out. So the last plug that you need to worry about is an easy one to forget because it's not as obvious. And that's inside this storage hatch right here. Uh, some boats don't have this hatch, in which case you don't have to worry about it. But if you do, go ahead and open up the hatch. And there is a clean out plug right there, which needs to be in place before you, uh, before you leave port. So just make sure that is in and tight. Uh, the hatch is designed as a wet locker. You can keep your dirty boots in there, you can keep your dirty anchor in there, and then at the end of the day it's really easy to rinse out um, if, if you can just pull this plug and rinse through. But make sure it's in place. Once you're all set, you actually have some water under the keel, it's time to drop your centerboard. Your centerboard is built into the uh, side of the starboard seat and it's controlled by this line right here. In order to lower it, all you do is uncleat and let it drop. Uh, when you hear a clunk, you know it's all the way down. It basic dra gravity drives it down until it's vertical and it will hit the front of the trunk and stop. Um, it will retract automatically if you hit anything, but if you don't want to drag your centerboard along the gravel, then retrieving it is that easy. Your rudder controls are straightforward as well. One line brings it up. So when you're beaching it, you will use this to raise the rudder and keep it out of the gravel. So release that line, and the other line will pull it down. So the rudder will float by itself at a 45 degree angle. Use this line to pull it down to vertical and then cleat off. All right, I'd like to demonstrate how, the reef, how to reef the sail. This is really useful if you're going out in heavier weather and you just need a little less canvas. Um, we try and make the process as simple and as painless as possible. Uh, the idea is that if you're out there and bouncing around and getting blown around by a, a rather stiff breeze, you want to be able to do this uh, quickly and efficiently uh, in adverse conditions. So, step one is you need to lower the yard a little bit to give yourself enough slack to uh, put a reef in. You can just reach under the foredeck and release the downhaul, which will give you a little bit of slack. And then you release the halyard and you lower the yard just enough to give yourself room to work. From here, without having to move your butt, you reach up to the boom. You have your reefing lines fore and aft right here. So starting with the forward line, you pull it tight and it will gather the sail at the, uh, at the front of the boom and pull it right down against the boom like that. And then you just cleat it off. Make sure this is nice and snug. There you go. Step two, you do the same thing in the back. And here, you're tensioning the sail, the uh, foot of the sail, as well as reefing in it. So again, make sure that's tight. And clean it off. 
step three, you raise the halyard. You want the boom to end up back in the same position where it started, which means that the top of the sail is going to be mm, at least a foot and a half lower. And then you tighten your downhaul to get your sail trim back. And that's it. You've reefed your sail and you can keep moving. Now, if you have the leisure and the time to deal with it, uh, the sail has these grommets built into it. You can tie that's called a line through the grommet to gather all this mess here and just tie it tight. And there's a line of grommets at the, along the bottom of the sail. And uh, if you have the time, go ahead and just collect your sail and, and tidy up. But you're perfectly fine to go sailing with this loose. Now, if that wasn't good enough, there is a second line of grommets, a second set of reef points. You move over to the other side of the boat. You have a second set of cleats. You can repeat the procedure and take another slab out of the bottom of the sail. And there's even a third slab if you set them up. We usually don't worry about that because by the time you need the third reef, there's some really nasty conditions out there. So as you can see, rigging the scamp is a remarkably straightforward procedure. It takes maybe 20 minutes, faster if you've practiced a little bit. Uh, takedown is just as quick and easy, and you get a remarkably sophisticated rig for the amount of time you spent actually putting it together. So get out there, enjoy the boat, and have fun on the water. Mm -hmm.